Oh, there we have it. We're into another week. Uh, interesting week. We had some serious weather in all kinds of shapes and forms roll through, at least here in western Wisconsin. I'm, I'm at the cabin, been here for a few days. So you're getting a report from Wisconsin talking about the metro area, Minnesota, also western Wisconsin. Similar conditions, very similar conditions we're seeing across this area. Uh, we talked about offshore, offshore being a topic last week that continues without a doubt to be a topic of discussion. Just put an art article this week, you saw it posted on social media, on swim baits. You're going to see a swim bait that I'm going to talk about. I caught a lot of fish on a larger swim bait as well with an all-terrain smasher and largey smasher head. I'm not going to show that one as much. You kind of learned about that one a few days ago on social media, on Matt Johnson Outdoors social media. Uh, we're going to talk about some ways we cut our bass, some ways we cut our walleyes. Jack got his personal best walleye, a big old blimpy 27 inch fish. We did not weigh it, but it was very healthy. Great fish. Awesome to see him catch that one. Uh, got me as excited as anybody. But swim baits have been key. Talking about offshore, I'm looking at my, my Lowrance unit. I'm looking at my Navionics chip. I'm looking at the different types of structure. I'm always studying things. And one thing I've noticed recently is Offshore structure doesn't necessarily mean, and I had some questions on this, doesn't necessarily mean stuff way offshore, isolated humps, isolated saddles. No, it can be just a bump out offshore. You can be cruising a shoreline 30 yards offshore, fishing a weed line in seven, eight, 10 feet of water, and you can see an underwater turn, underwater point that comes jetting out where it kind of flattens out, there's weeds on it. You get off the end of that, it might be now 60, 7,500 yards offshore, that's offshore, that can be offshore as well. So there's def definitely different definitions. Offshore is relative to the situation. Caught them really good this morning on an outside turn to an inside turn, underwater point, pretty consistent shoreline transition, contour line, and all of a sudden it jets out, stays flat all the way on top of that, and we're catching fish right in the nose of that. There was a little bit of hard bottom there, something different, some kind of a transition area caught multiple fish and some of our larger fish talking bass on that so offshore just means I'm not beating the bank right I'm not just gonna be casting up against docks I'm not gonna be casting along lily pads although there, there are some fish there it seems like our better fish our more consistent fish our more consistent bigger bite is coming more offshore so we're catching fish that sort of way uh, we're gonna stick with bass here for, for beginners for the beginning portion of this and then we'll touch a little bit on the walleye side of things and how we're catching those fish now for bass i've been throwing a lot of drop shot ned rig nico rig doing that kind of stuff on some of the outside weed line stuff now when i get onto those spots like i just mentioned where it kind of jets out weed flat offshore i'm flipping it i'm pitching a jig i'm pitching a all-terrain rattling AT jig. You can see I got one right here. 3 8 ounce is kind of my go-to. This is the Okeechobee craw. I got an Okeechobee craw colored pocket pocket uh, craw from Mr. Twister on the back. I got, you know, 40 pound braid. I got a fluorocarbon leader. I got my trusty Shimano Corrado DC and I'm going after it. I'm covering water. I'm pitching. I'm swimming. I'm flipping. And if I need to get into the heavier stuff, I'll switch to a Grassmaster jig. I'll punch. I'll truly punch through with like a one ounce Grassmaster jig, or I'll take a one ounce tungsten weight, my favorite flipping hook, a flipping out from Mr. Twister, a juice craw tube, something to that effect, and I'll punch heavier cover. That seems to be a one two, no pun intended punch, rattle an AT into a Grassmaster or some kind of a punching flipping bait. You know, you got your tungsten weight, your favorite flipping hook, and your favorite plastic. So that's been kind of the way we're getting these fish to really go. We got some fish on a crankbait. But this time of year, we're seeing a lot of weed growth. At least the lakes I'm fishing, there is a ton of weed growth. So throwing a crankbait might not be the easiest path of catching fish. We're doing it that way. So a lot of ways to catch your bass. That seems to be what we're doing right now to really get bit. And we're focusing really on 7 to 15 feet. If I had to give you a key zone for the bigger bites, 7 to 15 feet. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get a giant up shallow doesn't mean you can't skip a dock. doesn't mean you're not going to get a giant one on a weed line in, let's say, 20, 24 feet of water deep coontail. But 7 to 15 feet seems to be where that best hard bottom is with the weeds, that right mix to get your big bites and to catch many different fish at once. So that seems to be the key depth. Moving on to walleye fishing. We're seeing a lot of walleyes 
prime time, meaning sunrise, sunset. We are really struggling to catch walleyes during the day. As a matter of fact, we're not even targeting during the day. Right when the sun comes up, right when the sun goes down, and even that half an hour after the sun goes down. How are we catching them? This is what's getting bit. This is what Jack actually, you can't even tell what that is. I don't blame you. It's beat to death. It looks just white. This was a three inch Largo shad in the perch pattern. You can't even tell right now because it's just been torn up. And that's a smallie smasher from all terrain jig head. That's what he caught the 27 inch walleye on. Green pumpkin, smallie smasher, three inch Largo shad in the perch pattern. Cast as far as you can. We are casting out. A lot of anglers are casting into the bank and working it back out. We're casting out towards the deep and working it back up that gravelly, rocky, weedy bank. And we're working a moderate retrieve. Biggest thing is you make a cast out, you just give it a handful of seconds. Let that thing go all the way to the bottom and you're working it up that bank. And once you feel like you're starting to make contact with the bottom, increase the speed of your retrieve just a little bit. And these fish, you can ask Jack, are absolutely pounding it. We're using seven foot medium lighter, medium action rods. I got a 3000 series Vanford on here, 10 or 15 pound braided mainline, and you're gonna have an eight pound fluorocarbon leader about four or five feet up. That's it, pretty simple setup. Cast and retrieve, cast and crank this thing in. This is how we've caught every single walleye the last few days. We've tried all other kinds of approaches. This swim bait head, that small swim tail, slow retrieved, making contact with the bottom, picking up your speed a bit as you work it up the bank, and they are absolutely crushing it. That's been a really easy way to catch fish, a super fun way to catch fish. So we're gonna get back after it again later today. Pretty excited. And then we're gonna hit it hard this week. Uh, gonna do a little bit of traveling up to Gull Lake in Minnesota, do a little fishing there. And then as you know, we'll hit the Metro a bit, some Minnetonka, some Chisago, we'll come back at you. Same pattern on both those lakes I just mentioned, Minnetonka, Chisago seven to 15 feet where we're getting the bigger bites and then you're catching fish sporadically all over the place. Water temps, 79 and a half degrees right now. We did see 80, 80 and a half, 81 surface temp starting the morning at 76. Right now we're looking at almost 80 degrees surface temp. So things are warming up again nicely and that's the way I expected this week. Should be a consistent report for you. If you use some of these tools and tactics, I bet you the next handful of days, you should catch a handful of fish as well. Go out there, have some fun. We're in August which is crazy, but there's still plenty of open water fishing. Good luck, be safe, catch one for me.